What you're seeing now are my latest home screens and iPhone setup. Today I'm gonna to teach you how I set up my phone so it's minimal, less distracting, and it increases productivity. I wanna teach you everything from the way I set up my widgets, my apps, my control panel, as well as my lock screen. To make everything easier, I'm gonna leave chapters in the video so you can follow along. Depending on yourself, this might be slightly different because every phone is custom to your own lifestyle. But I wanna share with you my principles on setting up my phone so that hopefully it might share some insight in way to set up your phone. Now on my lock screen, I like to keep it relatively minimal. I've got a couple of different backgrounds that I like to use and obviously you can choose which one you like per your mood on the day. I like to have a few and switch them around so keep everything fresh. For example, I have this Spider-Man one where everything is black and red but right now I'm using this one and I like it how it looks. On top I have my dates and my weather because I need to see the weather as I'm traveling and also underneath I have my four most used widgets. The battery, the scan QR code, the payment code as well as Alipay. We don't use wallets here, we don't use cash here, everything is digital. Now, you, of course, you can change your home screen very easily, and all you have to do is long hold your wallpaper, click on customization, and then you can tap on all the fonts and colors accordingly. You can even change the color if you wanted to, as well as tap the top to just the suggested widget. I like to use the weather, or you can use events, calendars, or your fitness app. Underneath for the widgets, all you have to do is tap, press the minus to remove, and then add widgets from underneath. Some people like to have the weather widget down here. For me, I like to save a lot of space and to minimize my setup. So because I have the weather on top, I no longer need this widget and I can use this space for something useful. Now with the new iOS, you can also swipe between styles for your wallpaper. For example, I can swipe to the right. So it's a yellow theme, a pink theme, or an Azura theme. Now this is obviously because I am using a official wallpaper. If you're using a different wallpaper, let me show you. So if I was using a photo from my photo album, for example, if you hold on to it, click on customs, and if you swipe between styles, it becomes black and white. Dual tone, which you can actually set the different dual tone if you want. You can also pinch to crop and enlarge, and then you can also swipe for a color watch. Before I go into my control panel, let me show you my home screen, why I set up this way to reduce clutter and noise, and how you can do it as well. I only have three pages as you can see here. The first page is my everyday need. So my settings, my camera, my photo albums, as well as the most used social apps, my internet, my email, and my Instagram or YouTube. Now on the left, I have a very clear distinction of the date. I really like this widget because it's very simple. It tells me the date, but also it's very good looking. Right? As you can see, the overall theme you have to keep in mind is having minimum color. So on this page, I try to keep it very neutral with the exception of a green tone near the bottom. Of course, I try to keep the similar color apps together as well. Blue on the top, green at the bottom. And now on the right hand side, I do have my batteries because this is something I use all the time. I need to look and make sure all my equipment, all my gear is relatively charged. And at the bottom is my essentials, my call, my messages, my WhatsApp, as well as my WeChat. This is always on because I use it all the time. Now, one good tip to see which app you use the most is actually have a screen time app. As you can see here, I'm spending a lot of the time on my Safari as well as my WeChat, which is why it's on the first page. Now underneath, I do have another widget which I sometimes use but usually usually I keep it very minimum so there's less distraction on the main page. I have the weather because I want to see if it's raining or what time the sun sets and then of course I have my everyday use. You might not recognize some of these apps but in general let me tell you what I have here. I have my deliveries, my Uber Eats so to say, my Uber or Rideshare, my music as well as a couple of my online purchases like Taobao. So basically my lifestyle needs that I use on a daily basis. Now underneath the widget, I do actually keep one extra setting and that's the world clock because of my travel and my clients, I do have overseas clients with differences in time and this helps me to keep track of what it is. Underneath, I do have another app. This is more of a native app, localized. Uh, it is my travel app. It tells me when I need to travel and it shows me my digital wallet or my travel e-ticket for the say. Now, the good thing about widgets is that it's actually quite intuitive. So for example, my third app, which actually has my digital flight ticket, and whenever I'm at the airport or I have a flight that's coming up, this widget will automatically go to the top stack 
to show me my upcoming flight as well as my digital wallet with my e-ticket. And then rest of the time, it is my weather that's automatically on top because the app knows that I need to see the weather at all times. So that's something to keep in mind when you set up your widgets. On my third page, I keep all my other apps in classified folders. So whether it's social, whether it's productivity, whether it's finance, whether it's Apple's apps, most of these apps I might not even use. As you can see here, most of these are not even downloaded because I have not used them for a while and they are in cloud. So if I need them, I'll click on them and it will automatically download. And underneath, of course, I do have the social apps. Now, I kept these out because one, I do use ChatGDP a lot, but it's also because the color theme. So keep in mind when you set this up, if you have similar color theme, it does actually look good. And that's it. Now, how do you set this up? Well, very simple. With the iOS 18, you can now set up apps anywhere on the home screen. All you gotta do is hold onto the home screen and you can drag them around very easily. Another thing to know that you can actually turn apps into widgets if applicable. So for example, YouTube, all I have to do is hold on to the app and then I can choose this second logo. There you go. It becomes a YouTube widget, which is a quick way to set up your widget. I don't like to do it this way because it does mess up your home screen layout. So if I want to go back to the normal size, as you can see, it kind of plays around with the layout again. Now, of course, you can also go to the edit page on the top left and click on edit and you can add widgets this way. This is my preferred way. And for me, you know, I will click on a widget and choose the right size. For example, this is the one that I use and then add the widget on my home page. I can also drag and stack the widgets together if I wanted to. And if I don't like the widget, I can click on this and then remove the whole stack. Or you can click on the stack and look at which widget you don't like, for example, the second one and just remove. Now, unfortunately, see, it messed up the layout again, so I need to quickly just adjust this. Another feature is if you click on edits and go to customization, there's a new pop-up screen and you can choose from small, which is the smaller icon by default, and then you can choose the large one and then everything becomes larger and it removes the name of the app. It's a more cleaner setup, but personally, I do like the smaller look. Underneath here, we do have four different color themes. We have light, as you can see here, everything goes to light. And then if you click on dark, everything goes to the dark mode. Automatically sets the light and dark depending on the day of the time you're using your phone. So during the daytime, it's light. And then when it goes to dark or sunset, the phone switches to dark. There's also tinted, which tints your logos. Uh, personally, I'm not a big fan, but as you can see here, I can choose a color of my choice and then turn up the saturation and my icons will turn into that color. You can also use the picker here and then choose a color that matches your background, maybe this one here, and it will turn to this color. Now there is a little toggle on the left with the sun icon. If you press it, it becomes light. If you press it again, it becomes dark. The difference with this one and the button underneath is that it only impacts our background, okay? It doesn't impact our logo, whereas the bottom one, it affects the whole logo and the background. In the latest iOS update, you can also edit your pages. So I have three pages. You can change the order just by dragging very quickly. And if you want to hide a page, you can just remove the tick and it'll automatically hide that page. And likewise, you can delete whole pages now just by clicking on the minus icon on the top left. Now, finally, my control panel. This is something I use all the time, and I think it's really good with the new iOS update that you can customize your control panels. So if you scroll down, you can see this is my page. A lot of icons, but I like to keep everything on one page. Now, knowing that you can actually have multiple pages now. So you can scroll down, you can see here on the second page, this is your airplane mode, your cellular setup, and then you have your music. You can customize and move these icons to the second page if you wanted to but I prefer just to have a one page top left is all my settings your Wi-Fi your Bluetooth for example top right is my music and then these are my common use toggles my Bluetooth my lock screen my silence mode which is on and also a lifesaver low power mode now in conjunction with low power mode I also turn on reduce white point this actually reduces all the white points on the screen so it furthers reduces your screen brightness 
and of course you can turn off Bluetooth and Wi-Fi just to save more juice. I also have a control nearby device because I sometimes have two phones and with this I'm able to search nearby iPhones with the same ID and then I can control basic functions like play music, next page, home screen, etc. So usually what I do is that phone is my so-called iPod, I play music on that phone with my Bluetooth device and then I can control it with just one phone without taking that phone out of my bag or my pocket. On the right I do have my brightness and also my volume now bottom left that's flashing right now is the record screen button as well as the memo and then I do have a translation button which I found it really helpful because depending on which country you're at it's able to translate for you I also have the toggle for dark mode and light mode which sometimes I use and then of course I do have the do not disturb button now this is a game changer for me now if you go in to the settings and then if you have a look I actually set everything to be off, so no notifications, except for a couple of apps that I use all the time. So for example, phone calls, WhatsApp, WeChat, as well as some delivery services and my Uber services. Other than that, everything else is muted. So most of the time during the day, I'm set on personal and I don't get any distractions during my work, except for the ones that I really, really need. So I found this a good balance between do not disturb and just all notifications. Now on the bottom left, I have my torch and then on my right is my calculator. I have my assist touch here as well. Now you realize I don't have a camera button because one, I have the camera on my home screen and on my lock screen. But the second reason is because I'm using the new iPhone 16 Pro because I do have a camera action button. So just press up the button. I do have my phone access so that's really convenient for me if you have the 15 you also have the action button here you can set this to your camera which sometimes I use but for me because I do a lot of payment so this if I hold on to it it's my actual Alipay okay so I just go out press this button scan and I'll make my payment and to set this up is really simple you can go to settings now and go to action button and then if you go to the very back so by default maybe it's on silent mode if you go to the back okay you can add a shortcut and in here there are a lot of shortcuts now you can use okay and then just choose one that you use the most and that makes everything super easy hopefully that makes sense and that's how i think when i set up my phone and hopefully it helps you as well to increase productivity thank you for staying to the end and if you like this video feel free to like share and maybe consider subscribing i'll see you next time with more helpful tips